In this demo, we'll use Puppy Graph to navigate complex supply chain data to optimize logistics and sales performance. Here, we'll illustrate how to identify top selling products and verify their inventory status, ensuring they are adequately stocked. Additionally, the demo addresses products with no sales, providing insights into potential market adjustments, and also showcases strategic reallocation of resources, including offering solutions for transferring necessary parts from the nearest inventory when they are urgently needed at a specific location. This holistic view facilitates efficient management of supply and demand within the supply chain. Now to get started with Puppy Graph, the first place that we can come over to is the docs.puppygraph.com site. And if we click on getting started, you can see here that we have a few different ways that we can launch Puppy Graph. The first way is to launch it using Docker. The second way is using our AMI image on the AWS Marketplace. I'll click on the Docker instance just to show you. What we can do to run Docker, very, very simple. You start the Puppy Graph container using this command or any variant of this command, depending on exactly what you want to run. And after it is pulled down, you'll then be able to run that container, which will automatically run with this command, and access Puppy Graph on port 8081. And after that, you'll be able to follow the rest of the demo that I'm going to show you. If you're launching on AWS Marketplace, it's extremely easy to do as well. You just simply subscribe to the Puppy Graph AMI, and then you'll walk through the steps to launch the Puppy Graph instance. And then after that, you'll be able to access that on the EC2 instance that gets created. Now in this specific demo, I'm going to run everything in Docker. I've already run this command, and that is going to bring me up to the Puppy Graph main page here, where I'll put in my credentials. And once we've logged in, we'll see a couple of things on the side here. So we'll see schema, which is what we'll do first. We'll actually upload a schema. Now there's a few ways to do this. You can create a graph schema using our step-by-step -step flow, and this is going to give you a GUI style way to design your schema. The way that I'll be showing you today is doing it through a graph schema JSON. And soon, we'll also have an option that gives you a little bit in between, where Puppy Graph will read your data source schema and then try to map that over, at least give you something close that you can build off of and finish it up. And that will be in a release that will be coming out shortly. Now, if you want to just try things out and you don't have a schema, you can also use our example schema and data. And that's going to allow you to play around with everything that I'm going to show you today as well. Now, let's take a look at the schema that I'm going to upload first. When it comes to the schema that we'll use, we'll actually be connecting to Redshift. So as you can see in this schema, we have a just a plain JSON file that includes our catalogs. And here you can see that the name of this catalog is going to be JDBC Redshift. The type is Redshift. And then I'm putting in my JDBC parameters that I need in order to connect to it. Now after that, you can see that I've defined my vertices or nodes. So you can see here, for instance, we have label product. And then we can see how that is going to be mapped based on this mapped table source object here. So you can see catalog, we're going to pull it from the JDBC Redshift catalog. We can see the schema that we're going to pull it from, the table, and then any meta fields that we want to add to this as well. You can also see that we have attributes, so we can see that the product name is going to be of type string, and this is going to pull from that table itself. Same thing goes for our factory node, our location nodes, our inventory nodes, our material inventory nodes, the material, and then we also have customer product order, material order, and then we start to say how each of these entities above are going to be connected through edges. So we can see factory location edge, and we can see the map table source. And we have the same here for all the rest of ed the edges that we need in order to power this graph in Puppy Graph. So we've got factory location, product inventory, and you can see on each of these, it will show the from and to. So from product to inventory, and that's going to be the product inventory label for that specific edge. Same with inventory location here. You can see it's going to be from inventory to location, and these are the nodes that it's going to be connected to. And we can see that we've got quite a few of these mapped out here. Now with this defined, we can then go into Puppy Graph and load this in as the schema that we want to use as the data source. All right, so to upload this schema, I'm going to come to Choose File. Then I'll select the file that I want through the file chooser. 
you'll see that I'm going to upload supply underscore redshift dot JSON, and then I'll click upload. And we can see now that the schema has been uploaded into the system. And now we can start to actually see what this looks like from a graphical perspective. So here, everything that we went through in the schema, such as, you know, all of our different nodes that we can see here, and all of our edges are also defined. Now that we have this defined, we can go ahead and begin to use it to query. I'll click the query menu item over here, and you'll see that we have a few different ways that we can query this. Gremlin query, Gremlin console, both of these are going to allow us to run different Gremlin queries. If you're more familiar with the Gremlin console, you can use that. Our Gremlin query interface is going to allow us to run various queries and then also see a graphical output of it as well. Alternatively, you can also use Cypher. So this is an open Cypher enabled console that you can use. And then lastly, you can use Graph Notebook as well. So whatever type of language you want to use between Gremlin and Cypher to actually query the graph is up to you. I'm going to come back over to Gremlin Query here and just run a very, very simple query just to show you how it can work. I'd like to show you how to grab the top five best-selling products. Again, you could run this in SQL as well, but this allows you to see what the syntax looks like from a graph perspective. And I'll run this here. And you can see here in our output that on the result side, product ID 88, total sales 67, product ID 258, and so on and so forth. And you can see what the product ID and the total sales for that product are. And if we go back to the query, you can see here that we're getting all of the products that have a product order, and we're gonna order the sales by values descending, and then limit it to the top five is essentially how this query is working. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is the fact that we just used a graph query on the underlying SQL data set that's sitting inside of Redshift just by throwing in a schema. Now we could also do the same type of query for the five worst selling products. So you can see here, same query, but we'll do by values ascending and then limit it to the top five. And you can see here, here's our product ID, total sales. So we can see these have only had one sale happen for each of these products. Now next, I want to show you another query here where what we're going to do is for product 88, we are going to query the orders for the best selling products and their materials, as well as whether the inventory is sufficient. So you can see here that we've got product inventory, product location, and then we've also got product composition, material inventory, and material inventory location, as well as product composition, material order to materials, and then material order to factory, and then factory location. And if I run this, we can start to see now in this visualizer what it looks like. Here is our product, 88, that we see here. And we can see the different orders that are associated with that product. You can also see the inventory that's associated with that product, as well as the factory, as well as the location where that inventory is held. We can also see off of this that we have these purple ones, which are the materials that that product is made of, as well as the material inventory and the location where that material inventory is located. So we can see all of this here based on the query that we just did. And of course, we could explore this further. If I were to right click on this here, I can do expand with all edge labels. And now we can start to see a little bit more. And this is going to allow us to further query out to explore the graph even further. Now, the cool part is, is that we also have a couple of different ways that we can look at this. So currently we're looking at the radial layout. We can also look at a vertical layout. And this is kind of neat for this one because what we can see is something a bit more straightforward from the query. So here's the product that we're querying. Here's the results for product order. Then we can see material. And we can see when I go over top of material, the different edges that are connecting it to the material inventory. When I go over the material inventory, we can see that it's connecting me to the location. And then that node that I expanded earlier, we can see that here 
as well as when I expanded all edge labels. You can see the result that the query brought back. Now lastly, you can also do force layout here, which is going to allow you to see a different perspective of this data once again. So here we can see our product, and then we can trace this through the graph throughout each of the edges. So let's run another query here. And in this query, we're gonna query the path from a specific customer's orders through the products, their compositions, the material orders, the factories producing those materials, and finally to the locations of those factories. And that is going to look like this. And I will click play. And now you can see that my query I just ran actually got concatenated onto the previous query. Now if I only wanna see that query, I can click clear, come back to this, play, and now I'll run just that query that I just put in. But if you wanna run multiple queries, you can actually continue to build out this graph exploration over here. From this particular query, we can see that quite a few nodes are coming back. An easier way to look at this might be looking at it through the vertical layout. So I can see the initial customer. I can then see the product orders that they've done. I can also see what products were involved with that product order, as well as the materials that were involved in each of those products that they ordered. I can see the material order that brought the materials to actually to create the product. Going out, I can see the factory where those originated, and then I can see the location of that factory here at this boundary within the graph. And we could look at force layout as well here. So we can see customer and then obviously trace the graph through if we wanted to. Now based on product 88, I'm gonna run another query that's going to query the distance between the product warehouse and customers and then sort them in descending order based on proximity. So I'll run this query, paste. First I'll clear this, then we'll run this again, click play, and from here, I can see product 88. I can see the inventory that's associated with that product. And then I can see the location. If I come in a little closer, we'll be able to put this together a bit more. So we're trying to figure out the distance. And we can see here that we have a product. Here's the inventory. And this is the location where that inventory is available. And these edges, like this one here, is inventory location, which we can see over on our key over here, our legend. And then we can see for location, we can see this is the distance here. So we can see the distance is 8942.3972. From this side, we can see for this specific product, there's also inventory at this location, which is also in San Francisco with a different longitude and latitude. And Based on that, we can click here and we can see the distance right there. Now, if I right click, I can click on prefetch props and enable search. And I can actually search for something like out of all these nodes, I could search for a city and I could say city equal to, and you can see that it pre populates here. So I want to do city equal to San Francisco and it will actually highlight those nodes. Now, if I go back to one that's a little bit more complex, click clear. And let's once again run this query, the one for best selling products and the materials. I'm just going to zoom out a bit here. I'll right click. I'll do prefetch props and enable search. See up here. Now, if I do city, we can see that in this data set there are some properties. There's a city property that contains the values for Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco. Maybe I want to see or highlight all of the nodes where the city is San Francisco. If I click, I can actually see that right here. This is going to allow me to identify those within the graph itself. And that's going to allow us to essentially do an embedded query where we've already queried over here, but then we can sort through the data a little more easily versus hovering over each of them and trying to click and see which ones match. We're able to just do it directly through here. Now we can do similar functionality through the visualization functionality as well. If I click start, you'll see that this is going to contain all of my graph data and you'll see it start to populate for specific fields and other attributes up here. We can also zoom out to see exactly what the data set looks like. So this is a way without 
directly having to query like we did before, be able to check out the data set in a visualized manner. One other thing that I want to show you here is how our dashboard works. So coming into the dashboard, by default, you're going to see a few things. You'll see that we have the amount of vertex or nodes that are within the data set. You can see the amount of edges that are here. You can see vertex labels, so we can see what the nodes node labels are, and we can see the count of each. We also have this graph sample here just to show you that you can use essentially the query that you ran earlier. You can embed that into the dashboard so that it's always available. And we then have a table format here where I'm showing you the customers and I'm showing you the city and the customer name for each of those. Customer name.